the Mr. President has asked me to I inform Nigerians that he listens to them. Self-proposed nationwide protest, a people-oriented policies take time to mature. President Tinubu appeals to Nigerians. Periodic review of the national minimum wage from five years to three years. And provide a legal framework for seamless review. Walking the talk, red and green chambers pass 70,000 Naira minimum wage bill into law. It is so fundamental to the long-term future and stability of our economy that inflation should be brought under control. Central Bank of Nigeria again increases interest rates to further curb inflation. Hello and welcome to the Network News on NTA. I am Elizabeth Omori. Presenting business news tonight is a busy businessman, Benny Adams. Benny, hope we have some trending story reports from your corner. Sure we do. We will be bringing you cherry news about green bonds and equities first being accepted as alternative sources of sustainable funding. We shall get to hear more in the course of the bulletin. Also tonight, Bade Adeleye is standing by with updates in the world of sports. Bade. Well, Elizabeth, it's just three days to the Olympics. And we now know the flag bearer and captain for Team Niger area. We are hopeful, very, very hopeful. Also tonight, Adiola Komiakere will be reading from our Lagos Network Center. And don't forget to follow us live on our website, nc.ng slash live, nc news now on X, as well as other social platforms displayed on the screen. Now, here's the news. President Bola Tinubu appeals to Nigerians, particularly the youths, to keep faith and believe in the ability of his administration to transform Nigeria to an enviable height so desired by citizens. Information and National Orientation Minister Mohamed Idris conveyed the message of President Bola Tinubu after the meeting at the State House. Speaking on the state of the nation, the minister says the president is fully aware of the situation in the country and working hard to turn around the social and economic situation for the good of Nigerians. And uh, Mr. President has asked me to again I inform Nigerians that he listens to them, uh, especially the young people that are trying to, uh, to protest. Mr. President is listening to them, uh, he, he takes what they say seriously and is working as seriously to ensure that this country is good not just for today but also for the future. Um, the issue of the planned protest, uh, Mr. President does not see any need for that. He has, he's asked them to, uh, to shove that plan. Uh, he's asked them to await government's uh, uh, response to all their pleas. He has listened to them, like I said, and a lot is happening. Only today the National Assembly has expeditiously uh, passed the new national minimum wage. You can see how the president is working. It was transmitted only yesterday. Today it has been passed. A lot of other uh, interventions that the president has also put in place um, are also going to be looked at uh, expeditiously in the interest of Nigeria. So there's no need for, for strike. The young people uh, out there should listen to the president and allow the president more time to see to the realization of all the goodies he has for them. A Niger state government distances itself from the proposed August 1st nationwide strike, just as it is set to release 50,000 metric tons of grains from its silos to be sold at 50% less than its present price in markets across the states. Governor Mohamed Umar Bago gave this position during a town hall meeting organized by uh, to examine the state of affairs in Mina, the state capital, Husseina Musa has details. The town hall meeting, which attracted people of vested interest, including representatives of labor unions, organized private sector, youth, traditional and religious leaders, seeks to chart a path that will ameliorate the present economic realities and ensure sustainable peace. I want to assure you that the youth constituency of Niger states are not in tandem with this forthcoming protest. Governor Mohamed Omar Bago appealed to the populace, especially the youth, to look inward and profile workable solutions that will impact positively on the lives of the common man. In Niger State, 
we don't have any youth organization that wants to do demonstration. I will release 50,000 metric tons of food. So we're going to slash by 50% any food, any grain. We believe strongly that demonstration or riots will not solve any problem. It's peace, dialogue, understanding. They urge all and sundry to take advantage of the abundant arable land in the state in order to complement the federal and state government's effort on food security. Emena Hussein Musa, NT News. In Kaduna State, stakeholders, including civil society organizations and religious leaders, have called on Nigerians to reject any proposed protests. Mohammed Umar Ajengi reports that they emphasized the need for citizens to be watchful of mischief makers who are planning to hijack the protest and plunge the nation into terrible circumstances like the current experience in neighboring countries. Mustafa Tahir from the Republic of Sudan sharing his harrowing experience with a protest sparked by a sudden increase in bread price. Mustafa says the protest eventually led to the collapse of the country. He advised Nigerians to avoid a similar experience of the Sudan Republic. As of today, majority of the people in Sudan have decided their homes becoming refugees in neighboring countries. The stakeholders, including religious leaders, converge to disabuse the minds of the potential protesters for them to avoid the act capable of inflicting hardship on innocent citizens like the Sudan Republic is currently experiencing. We express our deep concern regarding the negative impact this protest may have on the nation's security, stability, and corporate existence of the country. It opens the media to uphold their ethical responsibility that contribute to promoting peace, understanding, and national unity. The stakeholders urge the government to continue to take all the necessary measures to reduce the high rate of inflation. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Murajinki, NTA News. Meanwhile, Kaduna State Governor Ubasani says President Bola Tinubu has provided all the necessary support to enable governors across the country to fight poverty and hunger, as well as foster development in their respective states since the removal of fuel subsidy. He was speaking during an engagement with a delegation from the Arewa Consultative Forum who came to discuss ways of finding lasting solutions to the problems facing the North. Once again, Mohamed Umar Ajengi reports. These are uh, the members of the Ariwa Consultative Forum. They are here at the Kaduna State Government House Council Chambers for a heart to heart discussion aimed at addressing the challenges facing the North. Hope that by this visit, to be able to promote a deeper and wider conversation around the current crisis of insecurity and poverty ravaging northern Nigeria. Tell ourselves some home truth and move together to fashion a common strategy to address our developmental challenges. The governor says President Bola Metinibu has provided all the northern governors with the necessary support to foster development in their respective states and bring to an end the issues of poverty and hardship faced by the people. The government of President Bola Metinibu has been given uncommon support to state governments in the north to address their Mirai challenges. I can speak because I'm one of the governors, and I know how much support we have received. In Kaduna, I'm Hamburu Murajingi, NTA News. Meanwhile, the coalition of Middle Belt youth leaders call on Nigerians to give President Tinubu the chance to actualize his blueprint for the nation. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, youths of Middle Belt extraction vowed not to participate in the proposed nationwide protest, saying it is ill-conceived. David Irie brings us details. The coalition represents all the youth organizations and over 100 ethnic groups in the Middle Belt. The group acknowledges the critical state of the economy, but believes that any protest now could worsen the situation for the masses. The whole system is overheated 
overheated with political rivalry, overheated with religious sentiment, overheated with uh, ethnic and uh, regional sentiment everywhere. The outcome of this would be very, very serious. The youth leaders are also concerned that some criminal elements could hijack the protest and unleash mayhem on innocent citizens. So we encourage our people, there are various means through which we are going to sort out this issue. One year, two months will not be enough for you to judge a government. We have seen certain steps that this government has taken. So let's give them a benefit of doubt. With our effort as Nigerians, with our patience, because everything, everybody is feeling it. They agreed to also relate with leaders of other geopolitical groups to ensure peace in the country. In Abuja, David Irie. NTA News. Violent protest is criminal, but peaceful protest is a right of Nigerians, and the police will protect those who may want to embark on a peaceful protest. IGP Kaudi Egbetokun stated this at the Strategic Police Managers Conference in Abuja. The IGP assures that adequate measures have been put in place in the event of a protest, and the force will respond in a more professional and civilized manner. This is a delicate time to want to engage in any form of violence and all the times will come together and say no to violent protest. Yes, we know that um, there is hunger, times are hard, but government is doing their best to ameliorate, ameliorate the suffering of Nigerians. A lot of measures have been put in place. Government is already hearing the cries of the people. Even governors at their own level are trying their best to make sure that um, things in their states are stable. And this is, not, this is not happening only in Nigeria. It's a global meltdown. I know some people who left Nigeria because they, said, they felt Nigeria was hard. Now they want to come back because they are, where they went is even harder. The police appeals to Nigerians to shun violent protests because it does no one any good. In other news, Vice President Kashim Shatima has flagged off the training of 1,000 youths on artificial intelligence and blockchain technology in Jigawa State. The Vice President also launched 1,500 J agro agriculture extensions and distribution of inputs under the NG Cares for Dama program. Status correspondent Abrahman Jibrila reports. Jigawa State, a pioneer in the adoption of digital technologies, that has trained various generations of change makers who have gone on to influence the wave of internet penetration in Nigeria. Empowering youth in Jigawa State with skills for global growth and economic development, Vice President Kashim Shatima at the event said this phase of the initiative is designed to train 1,000 Nigerians annually in artificial intelligence, blockchain, and other cutting edge technologies. This reality compels us to aim for the front row seats in the race to leverage new tools and inventions. We are not merely catching up with the rest of the world, we are poised to overtake them. This is why I wholeheartedly welcome our partnership with Blua to inject new life into our digital revolution. It is our belief that today's event will open a new opportunities, reduce unemployment by empowering our women with digital skills, we are not only breaking gender barriers, but also setting the stage for significant economic growth. The federal government is not only creating jobs, but cultivating a workforce capable of competing on the global stage. In infrastructure, in training, and most importantly, in the dreams of young Nigerians. This program we are launching today is just the beginning. To this extent, NITA invested heavily in Jigao State and we are partnering with the state government to ensure that all citizens of Jigawa have access to digital skills and literacy. The Vice President also inaugurated the 1,435J Agro Agricultural Agents and the distribution of agricultural inputs under the NGKS FADAMA program benefiting over 26,000 individuals, with 30% being women. The program is part of the federal government's broader vision in adopting this initiative across the nation to create a network of technology hubs that will 
power in Nigeria's economic growth and development. From Dusi, Jigawa State, Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. Still on empowerment, the fourth expanded national micro, small and medium enterprises clinic, one of federal government's strategies for making it easier to do business in Nigeria, has been launched in Dutsi, Jigawa State. Status correspondent Habrahman Jibrila reports that Vice President Kashim Chatima at the event also launched the Jigawa State Retail Shop Empowerment Program, courtesy of the Umar Namadilet administration. Respite has come the way of small business owners in the new world known as Jigawa State. Inspection of exhibition stands to showcase the skills and experience of the people and the inauguration of the Duse Ultra Modern Market Solar Plant for the National MSME Clinic. Vice President Kashim Shatima describes small businesses as the lifeline of communities across the nation and a strong pillar of stability at this critical phase of economic transition. This is why we cannot afford to have you have any care. We will not rest until each of you is in a vital position to accept support and capital available for our small We are delighted that this also aligns with our agenda for Greater Jigawa, in which we plan to implement several well-conceived targeted interventions to support and promote entrepreneurs, business incubation, and development of small businesses. Thank the people of Jigawa State on what we have done on, on, on this partnership. As part of efforts to ensure food security and stimulate economic growth across Nigeria, the Vice President has inaugurated 10 hectares of land for Jigawa State Solar-Based Sprinkler Irrigation Demonstration Farm for rice and vegetables at Sumore Community in Dusa Local Government Area to revolutionize Nigeria's agricultural sector as part of the ongoing efforts to enhance food security create jobs and diversify Nigeria's economy. In Dusi, the vice president also launched the Jigawa State Palliative Shops, a cashless transaction initiative to train 1,000 youth as agents across the 287 wards of the state. From Dusi, Jigawa State, Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. You're watching the Network News on NTA. Let's take a breather. The news continues shortly. <laughs> Thanks for staying with the NTA. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has increased interest rates by 50 basis points to 26.75% from 26.25% to sustain efforts in curbing inflation. Musa Ababaka reports that the committee at its 296th meeting expressed confidence that inflation is cooling off and will continue. The good news that Nigeria's external reserves rose to more than $36 billion resonate amongst these monetary policy members. But inflation still persists at 34.19% in June, from 33.95% in May, as food inflation also rose to 40.87%. The committee didn't disappoint to remain hawkish for the fourth time by hiking interest rate after reviewing economic and financial development within and outside the country. They welcomed the federal government's 180 days quick win plan targeting to boost food availability. It is so fundamental to the long-term future and stability of our economy that inflation should be brought under control, that in the short term, these are pains which ultimately will be able to help our economy and help the manufacturing uh, businesses as well. The MPC is confident that the recent increase in external reserves to more than $36 billion will boost investor confidence as the outlook for the Nigerian economy remains positive despite foreign exchange challenges. The exchange rate has converged, um, limiting the opportunities for arbitrage. This is very important. Um, inflows have increased from 37.93% between January and May in 2024 to, um, to 38.8 billion. Um, and net inflows, more importantly actually, grew by 73.4%. 
as metric corridor around the MPR is set at plus 500 and minus 100 basis point. Cash reserve ratio for deposit money banks at 45% and merchant banks 14% and liquidity ratio at 30%. This implies an increase in the cost of borrowing, which may impact growth, at the same time help to curtail inflation and attract foreign direct investment, as well as boost the value of the Naira. In Abuja, I am Musab, NTA News. And to speak more on the increase in interest rate is Professor Uche Uwaleke, Director, Institute of Capital Market Studies, Nasara State University, Kefi. Prof, thank you so much for joining us on the Network News. Thanks so much, Lizzie. My All right. pleasure. Good evening. So, what does the latest increase in interest rate mean for households and businesses currently? Yeah, yeah Lizzie, uh, permit me to start by saying that uh, with the elevated inflation with the pressure uh, in the forex market with the negative real rate of um, you know real interest rate um, it, it would have been unrealistic to uh, uh, you know have the MPC reduce the uh, MPR or reverse the um, if you like the tightening stance okay um, but I also think um, that um, the adjustment in the a corridor maybe um, you know uh, wasn't w w wasn't necessary because uh, for me that that's a concern um, adjusting the asymmetric corridor around the MPR um, you know to uh, from what it used to be uh, uh, plus one minus three to now plus five minus um, one you know has a lot of implications for you know credit growth also has implications for output okay. because what that means is that banks will now effectively take loans from the central bank okay. at 31.75 percent mpr now is um, 20, 26.75 plus five which is the corridor now the standing lending um, rates it means the rate that which they're taking it is now 31.5 and um, if you also look at the uh, standing deposit um, rates okay it, it has also been increased from minus three to um, uh, minus one meaning that the uh, central bank will now be rem remunerating banks, you know, at 25.75%. Um, so, okay. in other words, encouraging banks to pack, uh, you know, um, um, money in the bank, in the, you know, with the central bank. So, what that means is that it will squeeze liquidity from the banking system. Okay. And um, that will also have, you know, the effect of driving up interest rates and, um, of course, making a cost of funds... Um, you know, um, go up further. Okay. All right, Prof. Uh, let me draw your attention to this. The president signed several executive orders to suspend um, import duties and staple food items and pharmaceuticals, as well as allow the uh, for importation of 250 metric tons of maize and with which the CBM welcomed. Do you see this decelerating inflation in the short run? Yes, I've always said that for inflation to significantly come down, you know, the fiscal side you know, must come in because if you look at the major driver of inflation today in Nigeria, it is the food. So I see this as a welcome development. I see this stop, stop gap measure as something that, um, you know, will help moderate inflation, you know, um, uh, you know, rates, you know, considerably. Particularly if there is, after the 150 day uh, import duty window, if there is um, an exit, um, you know, strategy as rightly noted by, uh, you know, the, the CBN governor. So I think the fiscal side has more role to play, okay. you know, in terms of uh, driving down the uh, current, um, um, you know, stubborn inflation, if you like, because what the major drivers today are, in my view, non-monetary, non and they're non outside the control of the central bank. Okay. Now, we have seen uh, injection in the forex market and some stability as a external reserves grew to more than $38 billion, but the Naira selling at more than 1,500 Naira to the dollar is still high. Quickly, what's your take on that, Prof? Yes, my, my take on it is, yes, with external reserves now, uh, according to him, at over $37 you know, billion, and sufficient to finance in the months of um, you know, goods and services. Okay, for me, that's um, a, 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 a signal that also there is hope in the, in the forex market in terms of moderation. Because come to think of it, what is the major or the primary purpose of growing reserves? Okay, um, it is actually to intervene in the forex market. So I think this is an opportunity for the central bank to intervene more okay. in the forex market you know, with a view to bringing down you know, the uh, exchange rate. Because if you look at what 
part of what um, they also observed as why food inflation is rising. People are coming here, the role of middlemen who are moving uh, goods you mm -hmm. know, outside the country because yes. of the high um, exchange rates. Okay, so by intervening in the forex market using the uh, reserves that it has now, exchange rates um, you know, can come down. Uh, you know, such that that kind of practice, you know, um, can be can be checked. So I think the reserve should be deployed more in intervening in the forex market. That's the essence of uh, building reserves. You know, in the in, in the first instance. Perfect. I want to thank you so much. Thank you for joining us on the news. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Lizzie. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, Development Bank of Nigeria has received the Green Climate Fund accreditation, making it the first direct access entity and the only authorized Nigerian channel to access green financing. Managing Director of the bank, Dr. Tony Okwanachi, made the disclosure while briefing newsmen on the breakthrough which he said will boost Nigeria's fight against the effects of climate change. Charles Alpha brings us details. Green Climate Fund, GCF, is a fund for climate finance established within the framework of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Its objective is to help developing countries reduce greenhouse gas emissions while also assisting them with climate change adaptation and mitigation activities. The Development Bank of Nigeria, having been endorsed by the Federal Minister of Environment, has emerged as one of the six entities globally to get accredited for Nigeria. This, of course, is just as the bank aligns itself with the nationally determined contributions Nigeria has committed itself to. The managing director, Tony Okanachi, said so the accreditation covers projects that fall under the categories of basic and specialized fiduciary standards, project management on lending and blending for loans, such as category B and medium size projects. It's accredited at the, um, uh, the medium category means that projects for climate adaptation and mitigation of between $50 million to $250 million, a DBM is able to package and send to a GCF for funding. With the accreditation, Development Bank of Nigeria, DBN, is empowered to develop and submit funding proposals for projects and programs, oversee management and implementation of projects and programs, deploy a range of instruments such as concessional loans, co-financing, blending for loans, as well as mobilize private sector capital for such climate change initiatives. Being a bank that is also uh, focused essentially on micro, small and middle enterprises, we know the importance of the blue economy and all that together. So also opportunity to be able to draw attention and position MSMEs to be able to also assess those funds. Desertification, drought, global warming, unpredictable rainfall patterns, Storms and floods are some of the extreme weather events affecting the ecosystem. While this breakthrough for the bank will help green projects such as energy, shelter belts and woodlots projects. Charles Alpha, NT News. And it's time to join our busy businessman, Benny Adams, for more on business. Benny. Thank you, Elizabeth. And still talking green funding, stakeholders, intermediaries, issuers, investors and regulators have been enjoined to take advantage of the enormous resources and potential of sustainable finance to build a green climate resilient economy in Nigeria and create greater prosperity for investors and Nigerians. Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Dr. Imamotimi Agama, says the Capital Market Development Trust Fund of the African Development Bank Group is offering opportunities that should be utilized for the growth of the economy. He emphasized that the Commission is steadfast in its commitment to championing sustainable finance initiatives as the rules of green bonds have already facilitated a couple of sovereign issuers and a multiple corporate issues. And now, dormant account holders uh, are of the view that, or the governor of the central banks of the view that the Apex Bank will keep funds in dormant accounts and give back to owners whenever they come for it and the profits that accrue from it also. This is contained in the bank's new policy. Perhaps some of the mixed reaction 
could have come from the um, lack of or misunderstanding between dormant and domiciliary. Okay, this particular directive is with respect to dormant accounts, not domiciliary accounts, dormant accounts. In my experience, uh, what I found personally is that um, if you leave accounts dormant in banks, sometimes more than when you leave them dormant in banks, in fact, most times they are more susceptible to fraudsters. And taking a look at the market, investors lost 46.70 billion naira as the old share index declined by 0.08%. They closed at 100,048.12 basis points. A total of 280.9 million shares in 8,403 deals corresponded to a market value of 3.625 billion were traded. Today's data shows 16% decline in volume, 2% decline in turnover, and 4% decline in deals. The current market capitalization is 56.9 trillion naira. On the aggregate, 117 listed equities participated in trading, ending with 14 gainers and 27 losers. Veritas Capital Assurance recorded the highest volume of 22.5 million traded shares, followed by United Capital and Jais Bank. That is business news. Elizabeth, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Benny. Now, the national minimum wage bill of 70,000 Naira today got expeditious passage by both the Senate and House of Representatives as it passed first, second and third reading at plenary following its transmission from Preston Bola Tsinobu. Both chambers also approved the 6.2 trillion Naira amendment to the 2024 budget, 3 trillion of which is to be is to enable immediate implementation of the new minimum wage. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. The national minimum wage bill, no doubt, was eagerly being awaited by Nigeria's bicameral legislature since it came to fruition after a series of negotiations between the federal government and the organized labor, thus reviewing the current national minimum wage upwards from 30,000 naira to 70,000 naira. The bill transmitted Tuesday to both chambers was granted speedy approval as the Senate. This is part of the federal government's short-term measures to mitigate the situation in the country as efforts are being made to bring about long-term solutions that would align with the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians. In order to take into cognizance the galloping inflationary trend in the country, so this is very, very novel and highly commendable. The national minimum wage from 30,000 to 70,000 and to reduce the time for periodic review of the national minimum wage from five years to three years and for later matters 2024. Third reading taken and passed. The bill enjoyed similar consideration at the House of Representatives. This bill is to prescribe a national minimum wage and provide a legal framework for seamless review of the national minimum wage and for other purposes connected therewith. Meanwhile, both chambers passed the 6.2 trillion naira amendments to the 2024 Appropriation Act to capture the minimum wage into the budget documents. The Finance Act Amendment Bill, which made provisions for the collection of windfall levies from banks to be deployed to fund the amended budget, was also passed. The three bills will be forwarded to the State House for President Tinubu's assent. In another development, lawmakers in the Red and Green Chambers have given their blessing to the Police Act Amendment Bill, which will enable an appointed Inspector General of Police to remain in office for four years. It is essentially to say the tenure lasts as it is in the letter of appointment. I think my colleagues should support this. It will support security, continuity, uh, shareability, dependability, and productivity of the IG. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NC News. 
Meanwhile, the Senate has confirmed the appointment of Dr. Bailey Olatunji as Chief Executive Officer and Executive Vice Chairman of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Agency. Also confirmed is Dr. Judson Iwalefo as Director General of the Infrastructure Consensual Regulatory Commission. Meanwhile, Senator Ezenwa Onyoshi has defected from Labour Party to the All Progressives Congress. A chamber to witness the defection was the chairman of the APC Governors Forum and Governor of Imo Hope Uzodema and other party stalwarts from the states. This is the Network News on NTA. Time to head to Lagos where Adeola is standing by. Hello, Adeola. Network News on NTA. Thank you, Elizabeth. Local government, the third tier of government, exercises all the powers, especially that of the legislature and executive. To effectively carry out its responsibilities, there has been clamor for autonomy in some quarters and after decades, the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria finally granted financial autonomy to local governments. What then will be the impact of this judgment on local government administration in Nigeria? Local governments are institutional units with fiscal, legislative and executive authority that extends over the smallest geographical areas for administrative and political purposes, providing a wide range of services to citizens at the grassroots. With the landmark judgment by the Supreme Court, Council Chairperson will no longer be at the beck and call of state chief executive officers, nor will the allocations from the Federation account be paid through state government accounts. Some of the expectations, you know, uh, is improved services delivery. There's going to be a risk of mismanagement. And you see, you know, lack of capacity building may also affect the local government. While some stakeholders believe the new development will produce responsible leaders, others are of the opinion that financial autonomy is not enough as there are some responsibilities that both the state and local government share. Where we should focus our attention now is to ensure that the judgment is obeyed to the letter and then we also introduce how to hold our leaders accountable. But I know that our va the various structures, especially the legislative side, will be more. I mean, they should be more up to uh, the antics to be able to curb overspending. Although majority of Nigerians have applauded the judgment of the Supreme Court, they are also appealing that local government should be allowed to have administrative as well as electoral autonomy to put a stop to the imposition of chairman. The Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service says it's increased prevalence across the team's area of responsibility is based on the simple fact that where smuggling thrives, security will be compromised. And in order to sustain the peaceful atmosphere, it is important for citizens to share timely information that would lead to the arrest of illegal importers of military wares, illicit drugs and counterfeiting goods. The controller of the unit, Kola Oladeji, stated this in Lagos while showcasing 1,500 pieces of bulletproof jackets seized within the zone. Michael Olaleye reports. There is no better time for the customs to increase surveillance while expanding its intelligence gathering mechanism than now. This is because of recent seizure, raising security concerns. However, the enhanced patrol mechanism put in place by the Federal Operations Unit Zone A paid off as this consignment with 150 cartons of bulletproof jackets valued at 1.6 billion naira were intercepted along the popular Ijebu Day Ore Expressway. Although no arrest was made, 
lack of end user certificates guaranteeing legitimate importation is becoming worrisome. We don't know where they are going. Our investigation is still ongoing, but we now try to marry it with the seizure of arms we got at Oné. Are they just bringing this so that their equipment will be fully complete? This is what our investigators are trying to unravel. Because why should you carry this quantum? The unit also intercepted close to 1,000 kilograms of cannabis sativa and about 5,300 cartons of expired drugs at various locations within the southwest zone of the country. People who take illicit drugs. Within the month of June, four suspects were arrested in connection with various offenses while the unit recovered 62 million naira from the issuance of demand notices. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. And that's all from Lagos. The network news will continue after this break. This is the news at 9 on NTA. Let's talk bilateral relations. In recent times, Nigeria and the Republic of Turkey have continued to forge a bond leveraging educational and cultural exchanges. Nigeria's First Lady Uluremi Tinubu is pushing the frontiers of this cultural diplomacy with her visit to a Turkish school, Yunus Emre Institute in Abuja, where she also called for more collaborations between the two countries. Status correspondent Adeni Itayo reports. A total of 35 Nigerian children, male and female, are currently enjoying free education at this Turkish school, Yunus Emery Institute, Abuja. The male section was in class when Nigeria's first lady, Oluremi Tinumbu, arrived on the visit. There, she interacted with the young scholars who are not only growing their proficiency in the Turkish language, but are also positioning themselves to be at the center of Nigeria's future engagement with Turkey. Her visit is an opportunity for the pupils to show off their proficiency of the Turkish language acquired in the last six months. The First Lady also declared open an art exhibition mounted by Female Artist Association of Nigeria, applauding the Turkish government for promoting education and cultural exchange between the two countries, the First Lady says there is room for more collaboration. And um, it's really wonderful to see, especially the, the children from the orphanage, how easy it is for them to speak the language so fluently. And they also have um, opportunity for scholarship, not just only the cultural exchange. Turkish ambassador to Nigeria, Hidayet Barakta, is equally enthusiastic about the future of nigeria turkey relations leveraging cultural exchange. Everything is not just about you know, cult, uh, economy, political, there's culture, uh, you know, the dimension, cultural dimension, it's very important as well. The institute was established in Nigeria in October 2021 in Abuja, Adini Taiwo, NT News. Let's take another break and when we return, some sporting stories. Now let's join Badi Adeleye for some sporting stories. Thank you so much, Badi, for the updates. And before we go, the death of Ambassador Alexander Adoye has been announced. A requiem mass will hold at St. Donald Catholic Church, Cairo, at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, 24th of July, 2024, followed by a burial mass at his residence, and on Thursday, 25th, Fifth July, Lining State at his residence at 8 a.m. A funeral mass will hold on Friday, 26th of July at Sacred Heart Catholic Church, again at 11 a.m. An interment will follow immediately at his compound. And that's the news. Thank you so much for your time. I'm Elizabeth Omori.